Um, very good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for joining us for this special media briefing uh, for the ongoing visit of the Prime Minister of Nepal. Uh, to give us a sense of the visit so far, uh, we have with us uh, Foreign Secretary Sir Shivinay Kwatra, also joining us on the dais, our Ambassador to Nepal, Sri Navin Shivastav, and um, Joint Secretary North, Sri Anurag Shivastav. Sir, may I hand over the floor to you? Thank you very much and good afternoon to all our friends from the media uh, who have come here for this special briefing on the ongoing visit of the Honorable Prime Minister of Nepal, Mr. Pushp Kumar Dahal Prachanda to India. As you are all aware, the Prime Minister of Nepal, His Excellency Pushp Kamal Dahal Prachanji is on an official visit to India. We have just concluded the bilateral engagement between the two Prime Ministers. I would begin by running you through the program and thereafter provide a general sense of the discussions as also the key outcomes which have been achieved during this ongoing visit of Prime Minister Prachanda. This is uh, Prime Minister Prachanda's first bilateral visit abroad since he assumed office as Prime Minister in December last year. Overall, this is his fourth visit to India in his capacity as the Prime Minister of Nepal. Prime Minister Prachand arrived yesterday. Uh, following his arrival, the National Security Advisor called on him yesterday. This morning, Prime Minister Prachand visited Rajghat to pay tribute to Mahatma Gandhi. Thereafter, he was received at Hyderabad House by the Honourable Prime Minister for talks and after the talks concluded, both Prime Ministers presented their press statements which you would have all seen. Nepal occupies a very special place under India's neighbourhood first policy. Our relationship with Nepal is unique and characterised by open borders and civilizational ties that are anchored in our shared cultural and religious traditions, manifesting as strong people-to-people -people linkages, including those of kinship. The talks between the two Prime Ministers characterised the traditional warmth and cordiality between our two countries. The two leaders engaged in fairly comprehensive uh, and constructive and future-oriented discussions directed towards taking India-Nepal bilateral relationship forward in a manner that is constructive, progressive and beneficial for both our societies. The discussions and outcomes cover the entire spectrum of bilateral cooperation, including political, economic, trade, energy, connectivity, infrastructure cooperation and also development partnership. I would briefly share with you key outcomes during uh, the two Prime Ministers' discussion, which were also announced uh, just ahead of the press remarks. Let me start with the power sector, which has been one of the key uh, signature successes of India-Nepal partnership in recent years. As you would recall, India and Nepal had issued a joint vision statement on power sector cooperation in April last year when former Prime Minister Sri Sher Bahadur Deobaji was visiting India. During the talks today, the two Prime Ministers appreciated the growth in the power sector cooperation and also the export of over 450 megawatts of power from Nepal to India. A major decision today, which was also announced by Honorable Prime Minister in his press remarks, was the understanding by both leaders to increase the quantum of export of power as an objective from Nepal to India to 10,000 megawatts within next 10 years. As regards power generation, an MOU was signed in the for the development of 480 megawatt 
फोकत करनाली हाइड्रो पावर पावर प्रोजेक्ट इन वेस्टर्न नेपाल बाय एन एच पी सी ऑफ इंडिया फर्दर द साइनिंग ऑफ द प्रोजेक्ट डेवलपमेंट एग्रीमेंट फॉर द सिक्स सेवेंटी नाइन मेगावाट लोअर अरुण प्रोजेक्ट बाय इंडिया सतलज जल विद्युत निगम वॉज ऑल्सो वेलकम्ड बाय द टू प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स Besides power generation and power trade, which I just mentioned, there were also uh, achievements in the field of power transmission, where the two prime ministers participated in the groundbreaking of the 400 kV Gorakhpur Butwal transmission line. This is the second high capacity interconnection between two countries. India has also decided to fund three major transmission corridors in Nepal under the line of credit support of about 680 million dollars these are Bheri corridor Nijgarh Inarwa corridor and Gandak Nepal Ganj corridor uh, as you would have all noticed uh, in the press report some time ago India has also agreed to permit the first trilateral power transaction from nepal to bangladesh via india for up to 40 megawatt of power during the meeting the two prime ministers also expressed their commitment to achieve tangible and time bound progress on pancheshwar multi purpose project both sides also concluded besides this uh, long list of uh, agreements and specific cooperation in the field of hydro power uh, the both prime minister also saw key agreements concluded in the field of cross border movement of goods people and finance today india and nepal signed the revised treaty of transit which would be among the things provide nepal access to inland waterways of india for the first time this is effectively once in a generation kind of agreement which would contribute very significantly to the development of trade and investment linkages between india and nepal the two prime ministers also inaugurated the twin integrated check posts in rupedia in india and nepal ganj in nepal both prime ministers also conducted the ground breaking ceremony of the twin icps in sunauli in india and bhairava in nepal an mou for the construction of another integrated check post in dodara chandni in the far western nepal under indian grant assistance was also concluded india has also decided to fund and build two additional bridges across the mahakali river at Sirsa and Julagat in Nepal connecting to Champavat and Pithoragarh districts in India in the railway sector both the prime ministers presided over the inaugural run of the cross border freight rail operations between Batnaha in India and Nepal Custom Yard in Nepal on the Jogbani Biratnagar rail link which was constructed with the Indian grant assistance This was accompanied by handing over to the government of Nepal the Kurtha Bijalpura rail section of the Jayanagar Kurtha passenger rail link of which operations were flagged off by the prime ministers of India and Nepal last year. India is additionally providing one time grant for maintenance of the railway infrastructure for Jayanagar Kurtha rail section. The final location survey of Raksol Kathmandu rail link was also handed over to the nepali side it was also agreed that india will provide training and capacity building to nepal rail officials in the indian railway institutes the conclusion of the agreement between npci international limited and nchl of nepal links our digital payment systems and is yet another significant step in creating seamless financial connectivity between india and nepal this also builds on the launch of rupee card last year uh, on energy sector besides the hydropower 
the two prime ministers also laid the foundation stone for phase 2 facilities under the motihari amlekanj pipeline the phase 1 as you are aware has been a game changer for the supply of petroleum products to nepal ensuring significant cost saving and efficiencies an mou was also signed on extension of this pipeline motihari amlekanj pipeline from amlekanj to chitwan as well as on laying the second major cross border pipeline infrastructure between siliguri in india and jhapa in nepal so extension of the existing pipeline and laying of a new cross border petroleum product pipeline between the two countries india has also offered nepal for creating a ground station and supply 300 user terminals to offer the services of south asia satellite to nepal under grant assistance this initiative would promote regional cooperation in the space sector as also facilitate the utilization of space technology applications in important areas of governance such as medicine tele education e governance and also disaster response prime minister modi also congratulated nepal on becoming a founding member of the international big cat alliance as regards the other elements of the visit the prime minister of nepal will participate in the joint investor summit he will also be calling on the honorable president and honorable vice president of india later today tomorrow prime minister of nepal travels to madhya pradesh first to the holy city of ujjain and where he would visit the mahakaleshwar temple as you are aware prime minister narendra modi ji had inaugurated the shri mahakal lok corridor in ujjain in october last year the visit would reflect the depth of our deep rooted civilizational linkages honorable prime minister of nepal will also spend some time in indore and will have official engagements there including those relating to uh, with visiting the sites relating to solid waste management and also visiting a special economic zone there the visit of prime minister of nepal to india upholds the long established tradition of high level visits and exchanges between the two countries the outcome oriented discussions held by <coughs> prime minister modi ji and prime minister prachand have provided a very robust framework for taking our multifaceted partnership to even greater heights for the benefit of our people here as you can see from the long list of outcomes spread across pretty much all domains of economic cooperation these are all classic successful examples of the vision of neighborhood first that honorable prime minister of india has maintained with regard to india's neighborhood i would stop here and would take whatever questions you might have thank you um thank you sir the ground rules again please identify yourself and the organization you represent i start with you yesh uh, this is yesh seli from the new indian express so uh, they want to bilaterals uh, in improving air connectivity because nepal has been requesting that uh, um, air connectivity be enhanced especially in the, the airport at lumbini and what were the talks like uh, when they when both prime ministers did talk about resolving border cross cross border dispute sorry could you repeat the uh, uh, the first one the first air? one was air connectivity yeah what is the question air, air. nepal has been asking india to uh, enhance air connectivity especially to new airports like the one in lumbini so okay yeah please सर मैं कविता हूँ हरिभूमि न्यूज़पेपर से सर मेरा सवाल ये है कि दोनों प्रधानमंत्रियों की जो बातचीत हुई है उसमें डिफेंस और सिक्योरिटी का इशू जिसमें जो नेपाल की तरफ से जो हमेशा जो डिस्प्यूटेड बॉर्डर एरियाज़ हैं उन्हें क्लेम किया जाता है जैसे लिपू लेक काला पानी और लिम्पियाधोरा का जो डिस्प्यूट है उसको लेकर प्रधानमंत्री मोदी ने क्या प्रधानमंत्री प्रचंड के सामने में कोई बात रखी है और उनका किस तरह का रुख रहा है प्रधानमंत्री प्रचंड का इसके बारे में आप हेलो सर अभिषेक जा फ्रॉम सीनियर न्यूज़ एटीन Uh, my question is regarding uh, this agnipati scheme uh, and nepalese uh, citizens are not uh, 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 re being recruited uh, in this scheme 
uh, for long now and uh, whether the two prime minister did discuss this issue uh, and what, what was the overall uh, you know rook on, on this issue yeah सर मधुरित मैं न्यूज नेशन से मेरा सवाल रेल कनेक्टिविटी को लेकर है जैसा कि आपने बताया कि रक्सौल से लेकर काठमांडू के बीच जो रेल कनेक्टिविटी पर बातचीत हुई है उस बारे में नेपाली साइड को एंड ओवर किया गया है तो क्या टारगेट प्लान है कब तक के रेल कनेक्टिविटी का हम प्लान कर रहे हैं दूसरा सवाल सर हमारा अभिषेक के सवाल से रिलेटेड है बेसिकली जो गोरखा इसकी वर्ती होती थी हमारे इंडियन आर्मी में अब वो बंद है अग्निपथ स्कीम के आने के बाद से तो क्या उसको लेकर कोई बातचीत हुई है Okay. Uh, yeah, why aren't you sitting? Okay, anyway. Geeta Mohan from India Today. Uh, there are reports of statements from leaders in Nepal, uh, uh, former Prime Minister K.P. Oli, uh, regarding the Akhand Bharat map uh, in the Indian Parliament. Uh, he uh, said that that should be raised by the by the Nepalese Prime Minister when he meets with the Indian Prime Minister. Was the matter discussed? Uh, there was one more. Uh, Neera, you know. Okay, yeah, go ahead, ma'am. Um, sir, Akanksha, uh, Nepali Times. Um, sir, just uh, two quick uh, questions. Uh, one on uh, the Bhutanese refugee crisis that has uh, rocked the entire uh, country right now. A lot of pro protest in Nepal. In Nepal is also under an international pressure. Was this uh, brought up during what crisis? the discussion? The Bhutanese refugee, the fake Bhutanese refugee issue. And sir, uh, can we now? Uh, on the EPG, was there any discussion on the Abinet Person Group report? Can we now consider it a thing of the past? Thank you. So let's take this round and then a few more hands. Can I just pick up uh, different elements of different questions on which the answers are in clear yes and no, so that it becomes easier in terms of uh, responding to the other questions. So um, the question from Abhishek, uh, part of the question from Abhishek on the recruitment of Gorkhas post the Agnipat scheme. Aapka bhi prashan Gorkha ki recruitment ko leke tha. The question from Akanksha on the question relating to the uh, Bhutanese refugee scam in, in Nepal, uh, EPG report, and uh, uh, the question there from the, on the uh, uh, matter of mural, whether that came up or not. Uh, to the best of uh, uh, my uh, understanding, uh, during the restricted level talks and during the delegation level talks, these issues were not raised. Uh, Yeshi, uh, to your question relating to discussions on air connectivity, the two prime ministers uh, discussed uh, almost all aspects of bilateral connectivity between the two countries. I, uh, in fact, if you heard, uh, well, Prime Minister did mention that during his uh, 2014 visit, he had coined the term hit highways, um, infoways, and transways, essentially pointing to different elements of connectivity between the two countries. And uh, all these aspects came up. We have already mentioned, I have mentioned in my opening remarks, some of the crucial decisions relating to, for example, uh, infrastructure connectivity, whether it is through the ICPs or it is through the uh, petroleum. I've also listed out uh, the agreement relating to financial connectivity uh, between the NPCIL and NCHL. Uh, air connectivity and uh, how best to intensify as also expand the connectivity between India and Nepal definitely came up for discussion. Uh, there are many elements to it. Uh, there is element of connectivity between different cities of India and different cities of Nepal. There is also a question of connectivity with different cities of Nepal through different air routes. Uh, the principal frame of reference, and you heard this in 
the remarks by Honorable Prime Minister of Nepal, the principal frame of reference in looking at all broad level issues and specific issues of air connectivity between the two countries is a positive frame of reference. Uh, and in that frame, the technical experts will now sit down, look at each of the proposals which are there on the table, and would proceed forward to make uh, appropriate decisions. Uh, these are questions which require extensive technical examination because you do get into airspace. Uh, at some points, the airspace is uh, under the domains wherein it interferes into the uh, space which is commanded by Air Force and all that. So there are all, this is just one of the questions, but there are several other elements uh, which were uh, which are very important for the technical experts to examine on this. Your second question was relating to the border. Uh, in the press remarks of the two prime ministers, you heard what Honorable Prime Minister of India said towards the end of his press remarks, and you also heard what Honorable Prime Minister of Nepal said in his remarks with regard to how the border issue, how the boundary issue is to be, is to be uh, addressed going forward. Uh, I would not like to add anything to those remarks because those statements speak from themselves. They not only speak of the intent of the two leaders and the two system, they also speak of the specifics through which that intent is to be carried forward. And I think that is very clearly came out in that statement. Kavita ji, jo aapke prashan mein jo do मूलभूत बातें थी एक तो जो डिस्प्यूट के लेके उसका उत्तर मैंने आपको स्पष्ट रूप से दे दिया है लेकिन जो बाकी सेफ्टी और सिक्योरिटी को लेके जो मुद्दे हैं जो दो समाजों में सिक्योरिटी से मुद्दे जो जुड़े हुए जो प्रश्न हैं उस पे लेके दोनों नेताओं ने विस्तार में वार्ता की और उस वार्ता के अंतर्गत किस प्रकार से भारत नेपाल अपना सहयोग बढ़ाएं किस प्रकार से जो कि दोनों देशों के बीच में जो रेलेवेंट संस्थाएं हैं वो अपना सहयोग बनाएं ताकि जो भी ये सेफ्टी सिक्योरिटी की समस्याएं हैं उनको उचित रूप से ग्राउंड लेवल पे अच्छी तरह से निवारण हो सके इन समस्याओं का स्वरूप क्या है इन समस्याओं में क्या क्या चुनौतियाँ हैं जो दोनों समाजों के सामने उत्पन्न होती हैं ये अच्छी तरह से विस्तृत रूप से दोनों प्रधानमंत्री के बीच में सहयोग का क्या परिपेक्ष हो इन सब चुनौतियों को एड्रेस करने के लिए उसमें विस्तार में वार्ता हुई थी रेल कनेक्टिविटी यू नो एज आई जो रेल कनेक्टिविटी में जो रक्सौल काठमांडू का जो एफएलएस फील्ड लेवल सर्वे है वो हाल ही में नेपाल सरकार को दिया गया है अब हम नेपाल सरकार के कमेंट्स उस फील्ड लेवल सर्वे पे क्या होंगे आ, उसकी अपेक्षा कर रहे हैं शीघ्र शीघ्र जैसे ही वो हमारे पास आएगा उसके बाद अगले कदम यानी कि रक्सौल काठमांडू का जो रूट है आ, उसका आ, उस पर डी पी आर उस पर जो आगे टेक्निकल क्षेत्र में जो भी कार्य होने हैं वो कार्य से पहले हमें नेपाल के उत्तर की प्रतीक्षा है आ, हमारे फील्ड लेवल सर्विस के डॉक्यूमेंट को एक बार वो रिप्लाई आ जाता है तो इस प्रोजेक्ट की टाइमलाइन क्या हो उसको सुनिश्चित करना थोड़ा सरल हो जाएगा थैंक यू सर नीरज हो गया यस प्लीज माय नेम इज रंजीत कुमार फॉरेन सेक्रेटरी डिड द नेपलीज पीएम रेज द इशू ऑफ रंजीत कुमार Did the Nepalese PM raise the issue of peace and friendship treaty with the Indian Prime Minister during conversations? You please oh. introduce your organization also, just for record. I'm a freelancer. Yeah, that's it. Question of what? Peace and friendship treaty. Was was it raised? Treaty of peace and friendship, sir. Uh, who's handed it? Kalol, yeah. Kalol from the Hindu, sir. Um, sir, there are reports that uh, Nepalese government is in uh, here. Uh, sure. Uh, the Nepalese government is in talks with uh, certain companies in China for purchase of military hardware. Um, has India expressed uh, its opinion on this uh, purchase uh, that's currently under process? Yeah, 
Go ahead. Microphone. Sir, Manas from PTI. Sir, I uh, just wanted to know, in fact, I mean, how significant is this, the, uh, the power trade arrangement between India, Bangladesh, and Nepal? And are you looking at expanding it to some other countries in the future? Who else do you have in mind? <laughs> I'm just curious at the broad <laughs> nature. Anyway, I'll let the foreign second answer. Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, Sridhar from the Asian Age. So, we all saw uh, in, in the past few years, especially during Mr. Oli's tenure as Prime Minister, how uh, Nepal had a very pronounced tilt towards China. So, during the talks today, were any Indian concerns uh, and sensitivities uh, raised with the Nepalese PM uh, regarding the China factor? The preface is your comment, right? Let me just clarify that. Well, uh, the, the there was first a setback to ties during Mr. Oli's uh, tenure. Tilt toward China is your language. Okay. Pranay. Sir Pranay Upadhyay, ABP News. Uh, भारत और नेपाल के बीच में खुली सीमा है और पिछले कुछ समय में लगातार ये रिपोर्ट्स आई हैं कि नेपाल से सटे हुए जो बॉर्डर के इलाके हैं और नेपाल के क्षेत्र में के जो इलाके हैं वहाँ डेमोग्राफिक चेंज हुआ है और खासतौर पर जो प्रतिबंधित संगठन पीएफआई है उसकी कार्यवाहियों के मद्देनजर तो क्या भारत ने इस मामले में अपनी चिंताएँ उठाई हैं और क्या इस बारे में नेपाल की तरफ से कोई आश्वासन दिया गया है एक और हाथ था किसी का या आप बताएँ सर मैं विशाल पांडे हूँ जी न्यूज से प्रधानमंत्री ने रामायण सर्किट के बारे में तेजी लाने की बात कही है किस प्रकार की तेजी आएगी और किन परियोजनाओं पर अभी काम आगे बढ़ेगा क्या कोई टारगेट रखा गया है नेपाल What? In in terms of numbers, do you have any numbers? Sorry, could you repeat the second the, part of the question? Uh, the NPCI partnership, where uh, Indian the uh, f for digital uh, collaboration, do we have some, uh, some oh, you, sort of a financial target around that? The the MOU that was sounded. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. I uh, think we'll close with that. Sorry. Thank excuse you, me. What do you mean by financial target of a financial interoperable platform? What is the reference to financial target that you are talking about? If I can better understand, are we going to cover the entire Indians or also the na uh, uh, the entire population there? If do we have some sort of a bifurcation around that? Thank you. Let me start with the last question first. Uh, to my limited understanding of how. these platforms work and what exactly do they entail in terms of uh, the mechanisms in which uh, they operate uh, this is essentially a mechanism between npcil and nchl of nepal wherein the financial payments between the two countries across various types of commercial transactions would eased would would get eased up very very considerably so you could say you know in a way ease of payment of business transactions uh this operates uh, on a certain principle that the company providing the platform in india and the uh, company which is in nepal uh will provide these interoperable platforms that talk to each other so that the citizens on both sides can make the relevant payments for their transactions which they carry out uh the scope in terms of coverage of the uh, population the scope in terms of what kind of transactions would be covered or not is a very evolving frame so you might start with something i wouldn't say as a pilot really but let's say it starts with a a certain limited set of designated payments for an identified set of transactions which then over a period of time uh grows uh, uh and then covers a larger population matrix but also cover the larger set of transactions you would recall last year we had launched the rupee card between the two countries 
from that launch to today the use of rupee card has expanded very significantly between the uh, between the two countries likewise we hope that with this mou between npcil and nchl the other forms of payments which were earlier on not available to the consumers for paying their transactions would now be available and hence naturally this will expand the two businesses also on both sides uh, there is a certain element of uh, fee based transaction that goes into it which will also add to the uh, further economic contributions and gain within the within the two systems that use it i do not have the exact targets so to speak uh, fixed in this but the intention is to uh, try and ensure that uh, most of the retail transactions which take place which are which are conducted by the consumers get covered increasingly through these systems of financial connectivity so that uh, it makes it very easier not just for the consumers but also for the regulators and the people in between this frankly is a is a very significant step uh, not just uh, between the two countries but also in the expansion of uh, the entire uh, concept of financial connectivity between india and the other countries uh, so it's good to see that in our neighborhood increasingly now other countries are also joining nepal being the latest uh, example for this uh z news ka jo prashn tha ramayana circuit ko leke uh to usse pariyojanaon se judi hui pariyojanaon ko leke to is vishay pe pradhan mantri ji ne spasht roop se kaha hai ki ramayana circuit ki jo bhi pariyojanaye hain usko jaldi se jaldi kargar karke jo dono deshon ke beech mein ek bahut hi gehen aur mahatvapurna समाजों के बीच में जो एक सांस्कृतिक और जो एक धार्मिक श्रद्धा भाव के जो संबंध हैं उनको और गहरा किया जाए उनको और ज़्यादा बढ़ाया जाए तो इनसे जुड़ी जो परियोजनाएं हैं उनका जो है इस समय एक उनका चिन्हीकरण की प्रक्रिया चल रही है उसके बाद इस पे जो स्पेसिफिक इन परियोजनाओं की जो डी हैं उस पर काम और फिर बाद में उनके एग्जीबिशन पर काम होगा प्रणय जो आपका प्रश्न था आ, सीमावर्ती क्षेत्रों में जो डेमोग्राफिक चेंजेस हुए हैं आ, आ, और उससे जुड़ी जो आ, आपकी आ, जो भी जिज्ञासाएं थी जिसको आपने व्यक्त किया देखिए जब दोनों प्रधानमंत्रियों जी के बीच में बात हुई तो आ, एक जो हमारे आ, सहयोग और सहकार्य का जो एक महत्वपूर्ण परिपेक्ष है वो परिपेक्ष है दोनों समाजों की में सुरक्षा और आ, उनकी जो सिक्योरिटी है नेचुरली दोनों समाजों की सुरक्षा में अब जो जो चुनौतियां सामने आती हैं और ये चुनौतियां आज की नहीं हैं पुरानी हैं इन चुनौतियों का किस प्रकार से दोनों देशों की संस्थाएं मिलके सामना करें आ, किस संदर्भ में सामना करें उसको लेके क्या सहयोग हो उसको लेके क्या सहकार्य हो उस पर जो है दोनों प्रधानमंत्रियों के बीच में बात हुई है और बातचीत से ये स्पष्ट है कि दोनों देश एक दूसरे की जो आ, 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 सुरक्षा से जुड़ी जो चुनौतियां हैं उनके प्रति संवेदनशील हैं और न केवल संवेदनशील हैं उनको आ, उनके उनको मिटिगेट करने के लिए अपना सहयोग और सहकार्य बढ़ाने के लिए भी पूर्णतया तत्पर है श्रीधर देर वॉज अनादर क्वेश्चन रिलेटिंग टू दी हाउ सिग्निफिकेंट इज दी ट्राइलैट्रल कोऑपरेशन बिटवीन द टू कंट्रीज ऑन दी इन द हाइड्रो पावर फील्ड एंड आई मीन आर वी रेफरिंग टू इंक्लूड Uh, other other countries uh, in this look you have seen yourself uh, hydropower cooperation specifically and uh, 
power cooperation generally speaking is a very important uh, element of not just cooperation between india and other countries of region so in this case if you were to look at uh, power cooperation between india and bangladesh stands on its own india nepal we have spoken extensively about it uh, the consideration that power trade should open between nepal through the indian grid for bangladesh is part of a larger thinking that we have a great opportunity given the kind of power availability power generating power transmission network that exists in the region there is an excellent opportunity to use power and power trade including in the field of hybrid power as a very important instrument of strengthening regional connectivity uh this is uh, uh, uh the first effort in that direction uh, wherein our objective is that uh, 40 megawatt of power from nepal could transit through the indian grid and go to bangladesh uh, what benefit would it entail to india uh, i think the better frame to look at that would be what benefit it would do to the region and i think it brings in considerable and significant benefits to the region to the uh, question uh there were a couple of questions relating to uh, uh elements involving china uh the uh, extent of uh, whether that was discussed or not uh you would have seen from my remarks you would have seen everything that came out from the two prime ministers in their press remarks that overwhelming focus of discussions between the two prime minister pretty much absolute focus of every single achievement and outcome that has come out of the visit is on strengthening india nepal partnership particularly development partnership and also strengthening and expanding the areas of economic cooperation uh when it came to discussions of the wider developments in the region naturally the two prime ministers discussed how are the developments in the region what challenges they pose to our bilateral cooperation india nepal and how exactly should india nepal cooperate to mitigate those challenges that also was discussed between the two prime ministers uh that's it very much on oh, treaty of friendship etc uh no that didn't that was not raised during the discussions between the two prime ministers thank you very much sir thanks also to uh, navin shivastav ambassador as well as to anurag shivastav joint secretary north thank you all for joining us good afternoon